next um, thing I'm asked to comment upon is that complete protection is gained through understanding and situational awareness. And I would agree that this is indeed a very important part of getting a good protection. Um, for people who are getting involved in energetic struggles, I would really advise you to read Sun Tzu. One of the things he says um, is, first of all, do not begin any war until you have won it. If there is any doubt whether what will happen, uh, you should not take any chances. Because taking chances is usually very, very costly. You need to be sure of yourself. You need to be sure of the situation. You need to be sure of as many factors as possible. And then you can estimate what will happen, what the result of your actions will be. And then you can go into it and end it. If you go into something without proper preparation, you can find yourself in an escalating conflict into a, an armed struggle where like you grab your fist, the other grabs a knife, they grab a knife, you grab a sword, you grab a sword, they get a chainsaw, they get a chainsaw, you get a gun, they get a submachine gun and then ultimately both of you will be completely destroyed. And this is often how it goes with energetic conflicts. It is really um, almost Clausewitzian in um, that the one who is willing to go farther will have the edge over the other person and will eventually win. But as Nietzsche says, if you're fighting monsters you should be careful not to become one yourself. Because this is often what happens in these struggles, that these struggles only produce losers. Both of you will be in a very unhealthy energetic state, will be in a very low vibration and will have had to call upon or make contracts or deals with various lower powers to give you the power or the strength or the protection which you so craved due to that conflict. So situational awareness I think is indeed very very important to know what the next step will be. It is like a chess game. What will they do next? What will I do next? What will they do next? What will I do next? So you need to think a few moves ahead if possible before you get into something. Um, one of the most damaging attacks are surprise attacks. When you're sleeping, when you're relaxed, when you're drunk, when your defenses are down, then really a lot of harm can be done and often a surprise attack can be completely crippling. You think you're getting a nice healing from somebody and that person will utterly lock up your energy body and you will be literally powerless. Uh, your power will be blocked, your talents will be blocked or even stolen. Uh, it can be that your life force is also being uh, tapped off so you will never be able to heal yourself. Uh, so surprise attacks are usually how people are brought down for a period of many, many years. So getting surprise attacked usually by uh, trusting the wrong person or going into a situation where you go into an existing group as an individual. The group power can e very easily overcome any defenses you're able to put up. Um, also if you open yourself up to a person who says they're going to heal you, give you a blessing um, or do something else nice to you and you have a bad feeling about this or you don't trust it, don't do it. And many people really get completely blocked in their own spiritual development for many, many years before they manage to get rid of such a, an effect or such an influence. The same goes for membership. If people have joining rituals, don't go into joining rituals until you're very, very sure what you're connecting yourself to. Everything is of course called love and light and power and healing. But many of these things which are called that 
are actually from the dark side of the cosmos. And once you sign a contract with them, you are their property. They can do with you whatever they want. And you may disagree with it, other magicians may disagree with it, but they have rights. And don't sign contracts. And in a way, any joining ceremony, whether you know it is a joining ceremony or not, is a joining ceremony. It is a valid contract. If you, in the same way, if you sign and you think, oh, it was just somebody looking for my autograph or it was just for, I don't know, the electricity bill. <laughs> it doesn't matter. When you signed, you signed. It is not about intention. It is not about fair play. You can be tricked. So, yeah, you really need to understand the situation you're in and also understand everything that is going on energetically around you. Whether you should vote with your feet and get out of it, even though it's in the middle of a ritual or you're walking out of a group while they're doing their thing, they are often counting on social pressures to keep you there while your heart, while your mind, while your spirit, while your guides are screaming out that it is not right for you, you should get out of there. So what if everybody thinks you're an asshole or you're rude or um, you're impolite by disturbing their ritual? You should take good care of yourself. Follow your intuition. You have to take care of yourself because nobody else will. It is your responsibility to take good care of yourself. So always follow your heart, always follow your instinct. If one of your chakras shuts down, it can be either the stomach chakra, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, or the forehead chakra, that's a sign that there is something wrong, that you're under attack on some level. So isolate yourself, analyze the situation. The isolation is necessary so you prevent escalation. While you're in on the move, it is very difficult to really array powers against you. So moving around, going for a walk, sleeping in different places, changing the place where you sit, where you move, is very useful. Camouflage also helps, being in a crowd, being in a group. So go shopping, go do something like that. Very helpful. So you can also use the terrain to your advantage. So yes. You should be very aware of your situation, always. And you should understand what you're doing and what other people around you are doing. Because very often people get tricked at parties to drink something, to eat something, which contains a curse or some other horrible energy or even a possessing entity, which is then brought into your system to kick out your original spirit. So. Don't drink things until, unless you have yeah, prepared them yourself. Don't eat food unless you've prepared it yourself. Or unless you have blessed it yourself or cleared the energy yourself. I know, it may sound all very paranoid and in some situations it is necessary to be paranoid. Don't be paranoid all the time. Because fear itself is a harmful energy and it will also stifle your energetic growth. So you need to be as paranoid as is good for you, not as much as is bad for you. Don't allow fear to rule you, but know that if you do decide to become a warrior on one side or another, there will be fighting. The fighting will not be continuous. It is more like guerrilla warfare. Occasionally you're called upon to do a mission and these missions are dangerous. And occasionally an assassination squad is running behind the lines to take out people. You might be a target. So, such is life if you decide to get into energetic fights. Personally, I think you should not get into energetic fights by just staying below the radar. This is the best strategy of all. Just remain small scale, do small things. Heal yourself, work on yourself. Maybe heal somebody's cat, somebody's dog, uh, give a little bit of uh, 
supports, taking away somebody's headache. But as long as you don't try to do big things, also the bigger groups, uh, which have the armies, which have the assassins, will leave you alone. As soon as you start devoting yourself to an ideal, you will have enemies. And be sure that if you do decide to join a group, uh, that you know the enemies which that group has, and that you are very sure that you will be able and desiring to carry out the fight to the finish because these fights can last many many lifetimes know what you're getting into okay i hope i haven't scared you off with all this advice just know what level you're at and find challenges on your own level and slowly evolve don't try to save the world all by yourself in a single day.